This is 5 liters of nail polish remover and I am about to turn it into real vodka. It isn't nearly as simple as it may seem and when starting this project I never expected just how much pain, effort and determination would it take to chemically transform this cheap, smelly liquid into one of my country's favorite okay, so drinks. Here we go. This journey started about a year ago when I found this old, unlabeled container in my attic and when I asked my dad what this stuff was, he told me that it's just some industrial nail polish remover he bought years ago. I wasn't quite satisfied with that answer, since how often do you find 5 liters of a perfectly intact chemical just laying around, so I decided to do a little digging to find out what this stuff actually was. After a professional smell test... Oh god... <laughs> and some more technical analysis methods, I deduced that what I have is a chemical called ethyl acetate. It's indeed often used as a nail polish remover, which I guess is fine, but since I am a chemist, once I acquire 5 liters of a chemical for free, I just can't resist doing something with it. I mean, just look at this thing, it's beautiful. What's even better, I immediately knew what I wanted to do with this stuff, because ever since starting with chemistry, I always dreamed of getting proficient at it enough to turn ethyl acetate into vodka and satisfy my curiosity about how this is even possible, as well as see if such a forbidden drink would taste any good. That's exactly why, feeling really confident that I can nail this project and that nothing is going to go wrong, I jumped straight into it. The core aspect of this whole thing is going to be figuring out how to beat the hell out of ethyl acetate so that it turns into alcohol. You see, the chemical formula of ethyl acetate looks like this, while the one of vodka, or rather the alcohol in it, looks like this. It doesn't take much reasoning to see that they are quite similar, and to make alcohol out of my ethyl acetate, I basically have to break it up. Since, chemically speaking, it's a really stable molecule, I have to find something extra angry to throw at it for anything to happen at all. You would probably imagine such a chemical to be some corrosive acid, but it turns out that there is something just as dangerous in almost every home. Uh -huh, there you are. It's just the humble drain cleaner, and these white pellets are actually one of the most corrosive reagents known to man. This stuff is called sodium hydroxide, and it turns out that it's really the only thing I need to make vodka from ethyl acetate. To start, I first got some ethyl acetate into a flask without spilling a drop, and then added an appropriate amount of sodium hydroxide under some sexy lighting. I was really satisfied with how this mixing step turned out, and now it was time to turn this deadly concoction into vodka. Now, sodium hydroxide can't really react with ethyl acetate like it is now, and to initiate the alcohol-making reaction, I need to give it that initial kick. That's why I decided to assemble everything into this mysterious setup, professionally called a reflux, which can both heat the flask and condense any vapors the mixture lets off using a water-cooled condenser. The heating is exactly what should force the hydroxide to beat up my ethyl acetate, producing ethanol, which is the alcohol in vodka, as well as something called sodium acetate, which is really cool in its own right, and I will talk more about it later in the video. Anyway, after a while of heating, nothing really seemed to happen, and I was honestly worried that I messed something up. When researching for this project, I read somewhere that this reaction doesn't work without water present to dissolve the hydroxide, and I kind of ignored this until now. I really didn't want to call this project and my supposed chemistry skills a failure, however, just as I was about to admit defeat, something unexpected happened. You see, if this reaction somehow began without any water present, the generated alcohol would be able to dissolve the sodium hydroxide much like water, which, coupled with the enormous amount of heat generated, could lead to a runaway chain reaction. That's the same kind of reaction that makes nuclear bombs work. And what do you know, the reaction mixture nearly exploded. Even though I cut the heat, the condenser had a very hard time dealing with the sheer amount of vapors generated, and it got to the point where I put another condenser on top of it and prayed for this thing not to blow up. After some really tense moments and me giving in to the urge to capture some gorgeous footage, man, this is really quite beautiful. 
the reaction finally calmed down. This was progress, and to ensure that all the ethyl acetate reacts, I added a touch of distilled water to help things along and left this thing to simmer overnight. Upon coming back, my forbidden soup looked pretty much exactly like before and I was really curious to see if this whole thing worked. To try extracting pure alcohol from this goopy mess, I took apart the apparatus and professionally analyzed its composition to see if any ethyl acetate smell remained. Now, let's see how this smells. Mmm! Well, that's nice. That's quite pleasant, I would say. <laughs> yeah, we're really making some vodka with this one. It turned out that nearly all the rancid nail polish remover smell was gone and just some smooth alcohol smell remained, which made me really happy and satisfied that this roller coaster of a reaction worked in the end. Now, to make some fine chemistry vodka, I need to selectively pull the alcohol from the sodium acetate and unreacted sodium hydroxide, because drinking drain cleaner isn't exactly what I envisioned for this project. Since the alcohol is a liquid and the junk I want to separate it from is solid, the logical thing to do is just boil the alcohol out of the flask. To take care of that, as well as collect the resulting vapors, I set my flask up for distillation, which brings this project one step closer to how vodka is actually made, and I think that's really cool. It didn't take long for my reaction mixture to warm up and start letting off a bunch of alcohol vapor, which quickly traveled to the condenser and, after getting turned back into a liquid, dripped into a receiving flask. This is quite a handy way to purify liquids in general, and after only 3 hours it looked like no more alcohol was coming over, so I stopped the distillation. Apart from some fine spirit, that's the good stuff. This step left me with something a little more peculiar, and I had no idea why it turned out like this, but the sodium acetate was now brown and had an incredibly weird texture. It's kind of crusty. I figured that I am not going to deal with it right now, and instead focus on the overall progress of this project, which, because of the distillation going nicely, was really ramping up. The alcohol I have now is nearly pure, and I honestly could make my vodka with it straight away, but since I didn't want to accidentally kill myself or make bad vodka, I decided to do one more purification step to ensure absolute purity of my solvent moonshine. It will remove any traces of ethyl acetate and water, as well as other potentially poisonous junk, and it's honestly not what you would expect. All I need is this fancy piece of glassware, which when installed into a regular distillation setup makes for a fractional distillation setup, and it's honestly just as cool as it sounds. Much like before, it vaporizes the liquid in the boiling flask, but instead of collecting it straight away, the so-called fractionating column makes it condense and boil many times across its gigantic surface area, effectively separating all its components. That's exactly why, when I discard the first bit of liquid that comes over and leave some in the boiling flask, collecting only the middle fraction, I get essentially pure alcohol by sacrificing some yield. This stuff is clean as hell, smelling really nicely, oh yeah, and passing all the tests to confirm it's really only ethanol, which made me hella happy and pleased with how everything turned out. Now, in terms of the yield from this whole grueling process, I managed to make 196 grams of pure ethanol, which corresponds to around 70% based on the roughly half a liter of ethyl acetate I used. This is kind of incredible, especially considering all the emotional roller coasters and distillations I went through, and it proves that combining nail polish remover and drain cleaner is a real way of making alcohol. Now, this is cool and all, but the real question is, does it make good vodka? To find out, I first got this fancy, antique bottle, which I bought only for this project. Making some vodka was actually way easier than I expected, since it's basically just a 40% solution of ethanol in water. I quickly whipped up 200 ml of this stuff, and after mixing everything together and slapping on the best branded label the world's ever seen, I felt a sense of fulfillment. Sure, this isn't any fancy vodka, but it is my vodka, and I was just dying to see how a drink that was once nail polish remover would taste. Alright, so it's time to taste this forbidden water. 
I mean, it smells alright. Also guys, please don't do this at home. I'm doing this only because I wanna show it's possible and because I have faith in my distillations. Okay, so here we go. Hmm, oh man, this is actually nice. I mean, it still has a tiny ethyl acetate note to it, but I figure it's alright. Also, why the hell am I using this shot glass? I literally have a whole video about how this contains lead and how it actually reaches into your drink and, uh, and makes you dumber. What? The vodka was pretty decent and really not what I would expect to make from some random solvent I found in my attic. Overall, I am really happy with how this project turned out and this is not only because of the vodka, but also because of the sodium acetate I mentioned earlier. Turns out this sodium acetate is just as cool as the alcohol I made and I actually extracted a bunch of it from the crusty residue in the flask from before. This stuff forms really nice crystals with some wild properties and to better showcase them I casually bought a bucket of it. To show the chemical magic contained in this thing I got a bunch of hot distilled water into a beaker and chucked in a good bit of my sodium acetate. It quickly dissolved forming this clear solution and if this were just some regular boring salt it would quickly precipitate out upon cooling. However, sodium acetate isn't your average salt and can stay as a liquid even at room temperature. Still, it doesn't take much for it to turn back into a solid since even a stray speck of dust made a whole beaker of this stuff magically turn into crystal. This honestly looks cool as hell with these gigantic crystal strands appearing seemingly out of nowhere and what's even better I can re-dissolve them by heating the solution and when I cool it down again the whole cycle repeats. I had more fun with this stuff than I would like to admit and after growing some funky towers and submerging many things in the crystal solution I got the bright idea of putting my hand in there. The tiny issue with this however is that sodium acetate heats up big time when it solidifies and cooking my hand with it isn't really optimal. Nonetheless, many people seem to have done this on YouTube without much trouble, so I figured it's alright. Ah, well, it wasn't nearly as alright as I'd like, with my hand getting quite severely burned and hot sodium acetate spraying everywhere, which leads me to believe that other YouTubers who did that are cyborgs or something. Nonetheless, all these sodium acetate shenanigans were really quite beautiful and I think they are like a cherry on top of a vodka cake. I hope you all enjoyed this video and if you'd like to support what I do, you can share it with a friend as well as leave a like and subscribe to my channel. I also want to dearly thank all my patrons who fund these projects and motivate me to keep making content and if you'd like to join them and get early access to my videos as well as watch them ad free there is a link to my Patreon page in the description. Anyway, thank you all for watching and see you in the next video.